Hello everyone and welcome back to AJ Club Sport. So today I am really really happy about this video because it's been a long time coming and finally we got to it. But before we start, please make sure to go to my AJ Club Sport landing page on YouTube because there's a poll going on now. I would like you to vote and know your opinion about how much would you spend for a coilover kit that is of higher quality of what you find around normally. So let's get to it. I, uh, thanks to Andre Krutok, sorry for the pronunciation, I will put his uh, link down uh, in the description. Uh, he is running in the time attack uh, up there in Sweden and uh, I met Weborg Engineering. Weborg Engineering and Frederick Weborg, great guys, you know, I come from a background working for an engineering company in automotive. Well, they also are, but with a twist. They only do engineering of cars for the street, the track, and the hypercars for the track, like their Time Attack Evo, that is a, a, a championship holder in the Time Attack up in Sweden and Europe, and I'm not sure, but uh, it could be also in major series. And this is crazy, just check it out now. So what do you think of it? Pretty crazy, yeah? So what is it? Why am I so excited? So you know that I'm always on the watch to find new companies and better companies if possible to give us products that add real value at the best, uh, let's say cost, uh, money for, for value at, uh, uh, in preparing our GI apps. So what happened is I was looking for a solution to correct uh, the bump steer and camber loss we have in the front of the GI Yaris. So if you look at your stock car's front control arm, you will see that it sits, let's say, already parallel to the ground at stock height. So what happens is that when you lower the car, let's, let's bear with me for a moment. The car is on this side and the wheel hub is on the other. When you lower the car, what happens is uh, the arm goes up this way, okay? So being a McPherson strut that is coming up to the wheel hub here, what happens is you have a camber curve that is a result of how the, how the arm is positioned, how long the strut is, and the exact uh, geometry of the hub itself. So up to this moment, many don't know, that on a stock GR, if you lower your car by two centimeters, and mind that there is already a 1.5 centimeter difference, let's say tolerance between various cars that are stock, so two centimeters is very little. For example, lowering springs will put you out of range. What happens is the arm will go down, let's say, having the chassis down in this way, and you will put yourself in a position already of negative camber gain. What does that mean? Is that as you go around the corner, the car will compress and the, the chassis will go down on the outer wheel and the arm will go up. And what will happen is subsequently going up because of the geometry is not linear, what happens is that you lose camber, okay? So from 20 millimeter lower, you are already losing camber and you're losing it at a rate of something like uh, uh, 0.2 degrees each centimeter. I cannot uh, share with you the exact uh, data because uh, this is a uh, very reserved stuff. But what I can tell you is that I was looking for a fix for this issue for the GR 
that came without having to, get to change the subframe, the lower control arm and the hub because that is a very, very big expense and not everybody has to take away the last second on track. And also, let me tell you, I'm not so sure that it would make a bigger difference from this. So, where does WeWork come in here? These guys that are real engineers doing heavy duty track work on their cars and developing a lot of things, among the other softwares, they use MSC Adams. That is basically a model-based simulation software that models the car itself in its complex with all its geometry, all its suspension, all the tires, so also factoring in the levels of grip that they have. And they remodeled the GIRs as stock, and then they set out on the venture of developing some uh, lower control arms for the front that would correct both the camber behavior, therefore the camber curve, and the bump steer behavior. So what came out? I just got them here, I got them today, and we got these beautiful tubular chromoly steel arms. This is pure motorsport beauty. And you see, this is the wheel hub part. Let me just turn it around, big piece. Yeah. So basically, this part extends a bit more than the stock arm. It's got a different angle, and here you have a uniball in here, yeah. And uh, this offset offsets by this much the arm downwards. Therefore, at the same chassis height, let's say at the stock height, you will have arm down, and you will gain a lot of through geometry of itself of camber curve because this also is designed in a way not only because the arm is lower but also the design is different and therefore you get a better camber curve. So here you will go into positive camber curve. What does this mean? This means that the more you roll into a, a, a bend, a curve, or when you just lower your car before even using it, the car will go and add camber to itself whilst it's compressing. Therefore, where you need it, the camber increases when you're curving. When the car is rolling, you have more camber. And this will give the car a much more uh, sturdy and uh, effective balance. And uh, obviously, much less understeer factored. Everything of that is factored out. So. This is a very, very interesting way of improving by miles, even a stock GR Yaris, because even if you're at stock height and the car rolls, and the car rolls more than two centimeters when it's in a, in a curve and it's rolling, even with stock suspension, what happens is you are losing camber. And they, they designed this scene on purpose, because in this way, the car on the limit understeers. All of you that want to go hard, hard and fast, they don't want to understeer. So this is a solution. Plus, we have some other very interesting parts. We have steering rods that are new. And once more, they have some shims, one here and one here. And you can decide the position. And the steering rods, apart from being reinforced, they enable you to change the shims to change the bump steer behavior. Therefore, the car can be much more neutral and you will get less feedback to the wheel 
in a negative, like tramlining feedback, whilst the car is both squatting and rolling in and out of curves. So this is another big piece of the kit. This is all uh, motorsport grade parts. Plus, you have two options. When you're installing this, you can either cut your, just partially cut your um, uh, brake, brake dust uh, um, cover that is behind the disc, the metal sheet, or you can replace it by taking off the wheel hub and replace it with this. The wheel bearing, I'm sorry, not the, not the wheel hub. So this is an option. Quicker job or lighter job. And this, if you put this part in, uh, you will, yeah, it will take you half an hour more because you have to get the wheel bearing off, but you will also earn a lot of brake cooling more because without this uh, brake dust cover, the disc will cool much more. And if you are as passionate as me, you will keep your car clean, so the brake residue will not be much of a problem. Anyways, it all goes normally outwards. So I have had many cars without uh, brake dust shield, so I would say don't worry about it. It's a cool modification. And one more thing, you will also have to place the spacers behind the disc. So myself, I come from motorsport and uh, I have a bit of experience with this. And uh, I can tell you that the justification of putting these wheel spacers behind the disc is because uh, the, the bigger part here of the arm here is actually going to interfere with the, with the wheel hub in some way or with the disc. But the other point is much cooler. It's because you will get two plus two, so four millimeters wider, uh, uh, wider distance between your wheels in the front. So this will increase once more the bias of your car and make it less understeering, especially in the medium to fast corners. It will make a big difference. And uh, let me just talk to you about some of my history. I have had some big good moments uh, racing with Porsche Caymans and uh, rally Porsche Caymans. And uh, when I run the rally of Sanremo, I, I drove this car actually for the first time. And uh, uh, it was just a, a stock car that came from a single brand trophy on the track with like Bilston PSS 10, nothing special at all. And uh, I saw that Porsche, this team, had all these shims in the front. And uh, I used them to test uh, the car just before the race. And in that occasion, I got the exact uh, um, feeling of the difference they make to the car's balance, especially in that case, because you have a middle engine. But in all cases, it makes a big difference. And I can tell you that shims of two millimeter, like these ones, you can really feel driving. So I will be putting this on the car in the next days, and I'm gonna try to, to show you also the installation of this and uh, I think that uh, these are pure motorsport parts that can add a little bit of NVH because you're in Uniball but also you take away all the compliance that you have because even those like me that had upgraded the rear bushing with the Powerflex Black still have the front bushing and if you take a metal lever and you go and try to move the arm it still moves and flexes these are they are hollow by the way it's not so it's not so heavy but these are chromally steel like on wrc cars like on uh, track cars like of the biggest uh, uh, possible spec so even when you go to have fun on the track when you go to have fun in the rally stages you can be sure that nothing will move or nothing will break in any case, even if you hit a rock in a, in a cut and all of that, you will be okay. 
So let me know if you like this video, remember to vote the poll and if you haven't, please subscribe and put the notification bell on because much more is coming in the next days. Cheers now. Thank you.